How about that JD Terra? You got that radio on in there? Yeah, come on. Well, how are we doing this fine afternoon? Hi, right, we're doing we're doing pretty good down here. We just left the truck show back in Wildwood back there. It did the first time show category and pulled a second place in that, so we headed home to take that home with us, you know. Ten four, and where is home for you? Back up in Crossville, Tennessee. Ten four. Now, uh, it being a first show for you. What brought you down to Wildwood? What made you come out and bring the truck out and show it? I got a lot of friends that are in the trucking industry and community that do a lot of the shows and different things. And I've been wanting to sneak down here to this one for years. So I just decided this year we was going to buckle down, get the truck ready, find us a load, and we were coming. 10-4, it sounds like a pretty good excuse to get on the road and show off a pretty looking truck like that to me. Hey, boy, I appreciate that. Well, who am I talking to there on the radio? This is Jonathan Terry. They call me Birdman on the radio. 10-4 there, Birdman. Uh, what are you normally hauling on that? Well, uh, let's, let's, let's back up a step. Uh, uh, tell me about the truck there, and uh, what are you normally hauling with it? That's a 95 Kenworth W900L with the aero cab sleeper on it. It's got a 550 cab, 18 speed, 355 rear ends. Uh, full flat, man, with a lot of stone from up there around where I live and a lot of lumber. 10 4, what do you find yourself carrying the most? Uh, a lot of stone and a lot of lumber. I a lot of dry killed lumber back in and go out with a lot of stone, so it's about a 50 50 on that, I guess. And how long have you been trucking for? Off and on since I got my license there when I was 21, and you're pushing 32 now, so it's 11 years, I guess. Now, I'm sure when you first started driving, you weren't driving something as pretty as this. What did you start off in? Well, I learned to drive at a buddy of mine. I actually had a 325-inch wheelbase Peterbilt. We was moving household furniture, so he taught me how to drive. But my first truck, it was a 97 Peterbilt 379. Uh, I painted it up, bought it cheap, and put a paint job on it. It had a decent-looking truck. And Sold it and graduated to a Volvo for a while, you know, and then, but the Kenworth was always where I wanted to be, so I told the wife two years ago, I said, I'm, I'm going to buy me a Kenworth, honey, that's just all it is, and she said, uh, let's, let's do it, if you think you're ready, we can handle it, so we stepped into the KW. Well, 10-4, it seems like it's doing pretty good for you. Has it been a decent truck there? We put transmission and rear ends in it when we got it. But uh, I bought it from the original owner, which is a rare find, and it's treated me good so far. I can't complain. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, when it comes to giving your advice to any new drivers that are getting out there on the road and uh, wanting to try their, their hand at driving a commercial vehicle, uh, what would you pass along to them as uh, tips and tricks of the trade as a, for a guy just now starting out? I'd say the best thing you can do starting out, honestly, would be to talk to someone that's been doing this for a while and listen to them and pay attention to what they're saying because I've only been out here 11 years. I know guys have been out here a lot longer than me, and we'll all tell you, we learn something new every day. So if you come out here and you think you already know it, you're you're in worse shape than you were if you just, you know, admit you don't know and listen to people, talk to people. Yeah, I guess we got to put a little bit of humility into the picture there, huh? Yeah, and that's hard to do sometimes, you know, man, I don't want to take his pride out of the situation, but sometimes you just have to do it and admit, I don't know what I'm doing and, you know, talk and find out and 99 percent of the time i've discovered that if you ask somebody they're not going to look at you you know and make fun of you they're going to appreciate your honesty that you didn't know and they're going to try to help you out and get you on the right track roger that
Now, Terry, uh, I, I, would, I would have to assume that you're an owner-operator? Yes, sir, I'm owner-operator, run under my own authority. Uh, I love it. I couldn't imagine doing it another way, that's for sure. Sir, let me ask you this. Again, another guy comes up to you and he says, uh, I want to get my own authority. What are those steps that he'd have to take and one of, what are some of the pitfalls and some of the things that he might need to think about before he makes that step? Well, the steps are, you know, you gotta, you've got to commit to being ready to work. It's, it's not that big of a deal, but you've got to be ready to work for yourself and then, you know, fill out the application, send off the paperwork. The biggest pitfalls to it are, you know, don't do not do this to get rich, because that's, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get rich, especially, like myself, a one-truck operation. But if, if you want the freedom to make your own decisions, if you're self-motivated and willing to work and can force yourself to get out and work, this, this is an ideal way to do it, because that's what I tell everybody. The biggest advantage I have over a company driver is I go home when I want to. Well, it looks like we got some looky-loos here next to me, so uh, we'll have to deal with these guys for a little bit. Yeah, I think that van on that trailer out there is fixing to resolve. 10-4. Uh... The guy in that little blue car, he slid up to me, he gave me the little peace sign there, so I guess he approves of this old Roland TV interview, huh? Yeah, we can't get a blank trap and get away from nobody, that's for sure. I'll take this, it's not been too bad here, so it's a Sunday afternoon, we're doing pretty good. Uh, so, Jonathan, what are some of the things that you get yourself into by the house? Uh, any 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 activities or any truck shows that are close to home or any things you do with the truck there? Well, I'm the vice president of the Music City chapter of the ATHS, American Truck Historical Society. We got several little shows around the house, and of course, living in Crossville, Tennessee, you know, the bright and polished, they'll come up there to the Fitzgerald Wider Kids show, so we get into all of those. And uh, through a truck show through the ATHS a couple years ago, I got tied in with the BMW Car Club. And every year they get me to come to Knoxville, and uh, we set up at the school down there when they're doing a driver training program. And I take the truck down, we set the truck up, and they go around the truck and park some cars in some different places. And I let the kids see what it's like and how many blind spots there are in a big truck and everything and I, they seem to really enjoy it and it appears that they act like it makes a difference like it's a thing they never realized never noticed how the situation goes so kind of break that down for me uh, so a person would understand what actually goes on there well uh, we parked the truck in a location and then they'll stage a car, generally one pretty close in front of me and one on the driver's side in the blind spot, one on the passenger side in the blind spot. And then at one at a time, you know, the kids will climb up in the driver's seat and sit down, sit where I'm at, look from my perspective and realize that, okay, I know there's three cars out there, but I cannot see any of them. And so what do they normally take away from a session like that? I think a newfound respect for what it's like to try to drive a truck, because that's, you know, the big thing is give space, like the guy a second ago cutting in between me and you like that. There, there wasn't room there for that. If I'd have been loaded, you know, and something happened and I had to stop, we, we'd have had our hands full. That is a really good use of your time, and I'm sure a lot of people appreciate you doing that. Well, I enjoy it. Like I said, the look on the faces, you know, of its teenagers that are just starting to drive. And like I said, when they sit down in the seat of the truck and then look over in these mirrors and they can't spot the cars, and especially the one in front of the hood, you know, because you, I will have people cut us off real close in front a lot of times, and when they realize that, you know, it gives them a perspective that, okay, well, I never realized there was that 
big of a deal there. So Jonathan, uh, while we're on that subject of uh, safety and whatnot, uh, if you had a chance to talk to somebody, uh, a motorist or on the road there, what would you suggest to them as far as keeping themselves safe as they uh, move in and around your, your uh, truck there? The biggest thing would just be to, to give us space. In traffic is one of my biggest things. I run a lot around Atlanta and you'll see it every time. If I lay back off of the vehicles in front of me far enough that I can get stopped, it never fails that someone's going to fall over in front of you. And you know, it would be just to leave us the space that we're trying to leave ourselves. We're not dragging along to try to ruin anyone's day. You know, it's a safety thing. We're looking out for the public. And when you get ready to pass a truck, you know, just pass us. Don't get beside us and ride. A lot of people like to get beside you and just ride. I don't know if they get hypnotized by the wheels or what's going on. But, you know, just, just pass us on. And we're trying to stay out of your way. You know, we're doing the best we can, but we got a lot of weight and a lot of vehicles floating around. 10 for appreciate that. Well, Jonathan, it's been a pleasure riding along with you here. I think I'm going to hop off here at this uh, next uh, exit here and scoot back to the show and see if I can't uh, grab another interview with uh, with some of the other guys there. I, I appreciate you and um, have a good ride back to the house, huh? I thank you. I appreciate you. Appreciate the time. 10 for Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing each other at another truck show pretty soon there, right? Oh, I'm sure of it. But be careful when you still. I'm going back to 19 and we headed north. 10-4. Uh, we'll see you soon, man.